Okay, so explain this to me. It's an MMO car game. How does that work? So, I forget the label, MMO, okay? Just imagine being able to have a car, customize it however you want, and drive anywhere in the whole of the USA. And on the roads, instead of there being just AI traffic around you, there being other players. And we're giving you the ability to invite those players to play with you, or to challenge those players to race against you. So basically, it's a world of driving adventures with your friends. And it's seamless, right? You can drive like across the United States and it's seamless. That's it. So it's seamless not only in terms of no loadings, so you can drive from New York to Los Angeles, but it's also seamless in the fact that there is no distinction between single player or multiplayer. You're always going to be surrounded by other players. So the, the structure that we have, that we really wanted, is to create a world with lots of different things to do, but at the center of it, you have a structure that's regulated by a story. So you're going from Detroit to Chicago to New York to Miami, Las Vegas, and finishing in Los Angeles. And that's 60 missions of story. So it's written by uh, a few guys that have worked on Red Dead Redemption, uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. So it's a fun story. It's, a, it's not, you know, Shakespeare, it's not a classic story, but it's a fun story and it brings a structure so the players can find themselves in the, uh, in the world. Basically, you're going to be driving around in this world and anybody you meet you can, you can ask him to join your crew. And if he joins your crew, you're gonna be friends. If he logs out, that's okay. You'll have another bunch of friends that you can play with too. So it's a very flexible system that'll always push you to, to play together. So basically the idea is you're never gonna drive alone. What kind of stuff happens to you if you're part of a crew and play with your crew? So this is a fun thing. Every single mission, story mission I was talking about, you can either play by yourself or you can play cooperatively. So for example, let's say you have a takedown on a beach. By yourself, that takedown is going to be pretty challenging. But cooperatively, you're going to be four guys chasing down one target. And that's a lot more exciting. So all the time we're pushing people to play cooperatively. But I know that some people just like to play by themselves, so we still have single player there too. Well, there's a ton of new features. I mean, we started with the Forza 5 engine, so it got a great head start coming off of Xbox One with Forza 5, and they built right on top of that. So 1080p graphics, they've added a, that dynamic time of day, night cycle, but also weather. Dynamic weather can come in, so a, thun a summer thunderstorm can hit. The water will actually accumulate on the ground as it does in reality. It'll fill in the cracks first, and then eventually fill up and affect your driving. It'll dry out in a similar way. We brought drive avatars over from Forza 5 as well. If you remember those from Forza 5, cloud-based AI that mimics the way that you drive. Well, now in Horizon, not only does it mimic the way you drive, it mimics where you drive. So it pays attention to do you cut through fields or take shortcuts or jump or things like that. And your drive avatar will now mimic some of the things that you do. So 
ton of new areas to explore, ton of new graphics features, gameplay features. There's a new skill-based system, similar to the old PGR series, where you can drive stylishly as well as fast and skill and string together skill chains to earn points and earn, and earn upgrades and cars in the game. So, ton of new stuff in there. The big power of the Xbox One, actually, believe it or not, isn't the box itself. As powerful as that box is, it enables us to do things like 1080p graphics. It's the power of the cloud, the Thunderhead servers, the dedicated servers that we have in the cloud that enable things like Drivatar technology, where we can take data, huge amounts of data that study the way you drive, the tendencies you have. We send it up to the cloud. We use a massive network of computers, bake that down into tendencies, and send that back down to your box. So. The Xbox in some ways is almost a portal to our cloud servers that really that's where the future is and how we're going to continue to leverage and, and make the box better all the time. It has over three times the drivable area of the original Horizon. A lot more multiple paths to choose from. The, the, the kind of the mantra that we had was if you can drive there in real life, you should be able to drive there in the game. If there's no barrier there, you should be able to go there. Free to explore, choose different roads, drive through vineyards, crash through all kind of fields and things like that, and just explore the freedom of the open road. So it's incredibly challenging, but if you've seen the game here at E3, I think we pulled it off. We feel pretty good about it. I've been in the industry really since the beginning. Uh, I was around when we went from 2D sprite animation based games to 3D. I was in that transition and I've been working exclusively on racing games since 96, I think. And um, the amount of detail, what, it just amazes me every day when I look at what we can pull off and what we were doing back in the day. I remember the first car I built for a racing game, it was around 250 triangles. We have more triangles than that now in like the valve, air valve cap of the cars. But this next generation is really more than about polygons and textures. We can do things with light and atmosphere and the way light interacts with surfaces that was impossible even in CG film rendering just five or 10 years ago. And we're rendering that in real time on a, a, a $400 consumer box. Like it's amazing like what we can do graphically these days. So that's pretty exciting.